Alright, well, hello everybody and welcome back to the official Cyblogs podcast. Um, this week Elf is away, and in fact he's away for next week as well, so I'm going to be joined by Kelvin Baxter of The Geek Show. Hi, Kelvin. Hi. <laughs> So yes, welcome. Um, same format as usual. We'll we'll chat through some of the stuff that we found interesting this week. There hasn't actually been as much of it as there usually is, but um, it's... no, the internet has <laughs> has decided. In fact, the whole science world has decided. Uh, seeing as Elf's away, <laughs> it's it's going to have some time off as well. So. It's it's all over. It's done. It's not interested anymore. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyway, um, there have been a couple of cool pieces of news that 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 have come out this week, and the first of them is um. The announcement on Tuesday, October 18th, um, of uh, what looks like it could be the world's, uh, sorry, successful results for what could potentially become the world's first uh, malarial vaccine. Which, yeah, that's that's rather impressive. Many, many lives sold. Uh, now ask me why I'm slightly disappointed. <laughs> why are you a bit disappointed? <laughs> because if they, if they have a malaria vaccine, they'll have no reason to roll out the mosquito shooting laser devices <laughs> that was demonstrated last year. It's absolutely incredible. I watched uh, the video of, of it just sort of just previously to recording this. Um, Calvin got me to have a look. And it's amazing. It's this box and it shoots out laser beams, freaking laser beams, man, that, that shoot the wings off the mosquitoes in mid-flight and, and only mosquitoes. Yes, just uh, just female mosquitoes yeah. as well. It detects them by the wing beat pattern. It's absolutely incredible. And then shoots their wings off. <laughs> lasers. And they With do it, lasers. Exactly. And they do it in slow motion. You can have a look at the little puffs. Of of course, I feel a little bit sorry for the mosquitoes, kind of, because it seems like pulling the wings off flies, but, but in a more high-tech way. <laughs> but it's it's still kind of useful technology, certainly. Yeah, I think we've reached the limits of my sympathy for uh, the small flying bitey things at that point. I've been bitten. I don't like mosquito bites. Fair enough. And I want to see them killed by lasers. Absolutely. Um, but yes, this this uh, this drug is called Muscurix, uh, or RTSS, um, and has been worked on by uh, Joe Cohen, who's uh, with GlaxoSmithKline. He's a research scientist there. He's been working on it for 24 years. So you can imagine that he is... Um, a little bit happy. Yes. Uh, it's The work is certainly not over yet at all, and, and the scientists are saying this is no silver bullet. Um, it halves, uh, it about halves the risk of somebody contracting malaria, which is huge considering it, malaria kills, what, a little bit under 800,000 people a year, most of them babies or very young kids. Yeah, so that's um, a huge amount of lives potentially saved. Absolutely. And of course, there'll be an interesting, probably knock-on effect with um, things like sickle cell anemia. Malaria is one of the reasons that sickle cell anemia has cons uh, has persisted in, in Africa. So so we'll be watching that with a great amount of, mm. of interest and, and happiness for him, and, and <laughs> I'm sure he's just happy as as well. <laughs> Shame um, about the laser guys, of course. I know, right? But 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 there have to be so many cool things that you could do with laser boxes that shoot stuff. So, God <laughs> what, knows. What are the civilian applications? <laughs> <laughs> Parties, lots and lots of diff diff. Right, but moving swiftly along, um, the next thing we came across. I'm I'm going to get Calvin to go on about this. He's particularly good at it. Is um about nanotube springs, which have made a sort of a, a skin like sensor. Oh yeah, basically. Um, putting nanotube layers either side of a, a, a little thin sensor and effectively it, it kind of seems to make a um, like a flexible and tough capacitor really yes um, <coughs> and yeah these researchers at Stanford have created this film um, and they've got no end of potential uses uh, oh. for this thing um, it's fully stretchable transparent skin like so, I mean, the obvious one is skin. Uh, for the, there's been a, a lot of um, electronic prosthesis demonstrated yes. over the past couple of years, and they're starting to get feedback back into the human nervous system from mm. some of these Luke arms. Absolutely. Um, and this could be the front end to it. We, as we as we spoke about last week on the podcast, it's it's one of the big problems with, for example, new limbs or prosthetics is is the lack of feedback to your brain. It makes it very difficult to do something as simple as holding a glass, yes. um, let alone you know trying to do anything else. So this is this is pretty cool. But but there's all sorts of other uses for it as well. And and you know you've got to love silicon capacitor like electrical currents and carbon nanotubes is always going to be a recipe for for a lot of really cool stuff. Um, but they're saying um, they could be used, for example, for touch screens, which would be collapsible, stretchable, and, and pretty much indestructible. And apparently. pressure sensitive. 
And pressure sensitive, which is great. You could use them um, as transparent electrodes for solar cells as well. Yep. You could wrap those around vehicles. You could wrap them around buildings. You could wrap yeah. them around anything. Um, curved surfaces. So you, you're not just flat panels anymore. Mm -hmm. and, um, and even things like, um, well, any biofeedback systems, for example, in the article here, they, they talk about smart steering wheels, which could sense if the driver was falling asleep. So sort of like a, a dead man's switch, but but not, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> um, I think it's it's really cool. Uh, it's been funded by the U.S. intelligence community, apparently. So, oh, um, like so many cool things. Yeah, it has. Which, to, which is really horrible and worrying. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see what their interest in it, in it is, I, I doubt we'd ever find out, I suppose, but as long as everybody else gets to have a have a look at it as well and, and have a use of it, then and that seems pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're also looking at, at possibly other films which could do things like um, uh, detect moisture or temperature or light or, or all kinds of things, mm -hmm. these, these sort of organic films. I mean, our sensing technologies could get so much better, which is, is always very exciting. Which it's... Um very exciting for the idea of prosthetics that could actually be just as good, if not better, than human limbs. Absolutely, in which case you can cut off my limbs quite happily and give me better versions. I'd be totally thrilled. <laughs> Excellent, because yeah, I have RSI. <laughs> I would love to switch that off. That would be great. It would be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what have we got next? I think we're talking about, ah, oh, yes, an 18th century secret code, potentially. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of cool. Um, computer scientists from Sweden and the U.S. have, have used um, modern statistical translation techniques. Um, for example, they're, they're the kind of algorithms that Google Translate uses, and they've decoded a 250-year-old secret society's document, manuscript thing. Now, it was called the Kopiali Cipher, um, and it was written in the late 18th century and found in the East Berlin Academy. It's about 105 pages long, and and make, uses an interesting sort of mixture of um, symbols and also letters which seem that well, they they are recognisable. I think they're sort of Roman or Greek type looking. Anyway, nobody's been able to crack it, and and they finally did. <laughs> they and and. So they took the um, the Roman and the Greek characters, uh, and first they thought they, those might be the real message. Um, so they had a look at translating that, and after, what, 80 different languages, nothing had happened. So they figured, well, maybe those were there as, as, a, as a red herring. So they looked at the symbols, and this is where they started using some very, very clever um, algorithms around it. And they figured out what it says. <laughs> it's apparently... And what does it say? <laughs> this is really strange. Um, I... The documents revealed that the rituals and political leanings of a, a German secret society, which isn't surprising considering where it was found, um, but this one apparently had a weird obsession with eyeballs, plucking eyebrows, eye surgery, and ophthalmology. Um, we'll post up a link on the blog post that accompanies this, which you can find at cyblogs.co.nz forward slash task. Um, yeah, you can you can actually read the entire manuscript in English if you, if you would like. I haven't yet. Um, <laughs> I, not I right. noticed in the, the article it's... Uh, it's not just you can read the entire manifesto here. It's you can read the entire weird manifesto <laughs> here. Yeah, it's 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 really, really, really interesting stuff. These strange secret societies. I think it it uh, once again it just goes to to show um, that old knowledge is not necessarily any good. It's not better. Yeah. This, this you know to somebody um, this was worth protecting. This yeah. knowledge about eyeballs and eyebrows and, <laughs> and stuff. Protecting with a code so strong that no one could that decode it. That no one's it been able to break for, it. For many, many moons. We wonder what, you know, what secrets about eye surgery might we have, have known earlier, had we, but no, I, I don't understand it. Um, it is quite cool though, because it's the first time this, this sort of approach has been used. Mm. And so there are a number of other sort of cryptographic puzzles lying around the world. One of the most famous is, um, Cryptos, which is an encrypted message carved into a huge granite sculpture on the grounds of the CIA headquarters. And if anybody is interested in puzzle breaking, you can. There are pictures on the internet, and you can see what other people have done so far. Anyway, no one's ever been able to break it. And uh, so he's going to attack things like that with his new technique cool. and see what comes out of it. And, and are they sure that that is actually code and it's not just someone trolling? It's always possible. The artist who made it swears it's a code, but God knows. I mean, he may just have sort of thrown some symbols at the granite and seen what's stuck. It's, it's certainly one of the endearing cryptographic puzzles. Uh, endearing, sorry, and endearing uh, cryptographic puzzles lying around. 
Hmm. Uh, so, and moving along, uh, Kelvin, what are you wanting to talk about? 